I know for myself, I think I've always been really low in testosterone and I've always really struggled, like really hit the gym hard four days a week, sometimes five days a week and just still struggling to build muscle. And I just thought, oh, I'm just a woman, that's, that's why. But now that I do testosterone replacement, I get much better results. Our guest today, Lucas Ayun. So he's Australia's leading biohacker with over seven years of experience researching and experimenting with nootropics and other performance enhancing compounds. And he's extremely motivated to discover something big for science that can benefit millions of people globally. Lucas offers cutting edge health content ranging from nutrition research, hormone research, and nootropic research uh, that 99.9% .9 of the world has never heard of. Lucas thrives on offering insanely valuable content on a global scale, which you can find at boostyourbiology.com. And now a word from one of our sponsors. So imagine a world where we don't actually fight cancer, we just tell our bodies to stop growing it. Sounds groundbreaking, right? Dr. Dana Flavin, who's a world-renowned cancer specialist for over 40 years, warns we are swimming in toxins. They're in our daily products, our food, water, and air. The real danger, these toxins signal our body to grow cancer. That's why I urge you to join Dr. Flavin and Nathan Crean, an award-winning health researcher in an eye-opening web class. They'll reveal the nine key toxins that could be triggering cancer in your body, and most importantly, how to eliminate them. Don't just fight cancer, go right to its root cause. So join me by going to conqueringcancer.com slash Wendy Myers, M-Y-E-R-S, now to register for this free web class. It's so important. Again, that's conqueringcancer.com slash Wendy Myers. Make the change today. Lucas, thank you so much for joining the show. Hey, Wendy. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us. So I met you at the World Biohacking Summit in Dubai, and I heard mm -hmm. you speak, and I was really impressed, and I wanted to have you come on the show. And now it's just a really interesting experience to see all the the very different uh, kind of demographic there that was really interested in in biohacking and you know mm -hmm. optimizing their health. Like in the United Arab Emirates, it just seems like you know, there's not a lot of alternative health and uh, biohacking going on. So I love the, the intense interest everyone there had. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a great, great start to the the biohacking space in, in Dubai. And so, <clears throat> yeah, it was a pleasure to speak there and great to meet you and all the other speakers as well. Yeah. So, it's, so I wanted to talk about what you touched on in your, your talk in, in Dubai, which is talking about testosterone optimization. And so this is something mm. that Think is really important because I think there's a lot, lot of women out there low in testosterone, but a lot of men also, and they really, I feel like they really suffer from low mm. testosterone because they're so, as I talk about on the show, there are so many heavy metals and environmental toxins that interfere in all hormones, including testosterone, and there's a, a frightening, uh, you know, decline in sperm counts. You know, mm. I've read some statistics that, you know, we could have as little, if the sperm decline rates continue at the rate they are now, we could have even 20 million sperm per milliliter by 2050. I mean, that yeah. that's that's frightening. It's related to testosterone levels, of course. Um, mm. But so let's talk about that. What is it? What is your take? Why are, why do so many people today have low testosterone levels? Yeah, definitely. I think a, a major contributing factor, as you outlined, Wendy, is definitely the exposure of um, these endocrine disrupting chemicals, the EDCs in our environment. It's so ubiquitous. It's pretty hard for men to escape. Um, and so I definitely think that's a big factor contributing to the decline in testosterone and also fertility, as, as you mentioned. I also think other critical factors that play a role here include um, simply... Uh, being obese, so carrying excess body weight, that can obviously be a major factor, a contributing factor, because you know excess, you know, body fat increases the conversion of testosterone into estrogen in men because it it upregulates the aromatase enzyme, and then also looking at critical nutrient deficiencies, so things like you know zinc deficiency, magnesium deficiency, um, you know these are critical elements that we need from our diet, which is 
unfortunately, our diet is void of these critical nutrients that are absolutely essential for male reproductive capacity. So in terms of, you know, the various factors, I think uh, men really need to pay attention to, um, you know, critical thing is looking at their blood test results and looking at their blood work. And that's why, you know, I'm a big, a big advocate for taking a very objective stance on evaluating someone's health, looking at what their blood test analysis shows. Well, I think a good test is just if you have no libido, you probably are <laughs> low in testosterone. <laughs> so I think that could be like a little dipstick there, a little, uh, you know, little symptom there. A lot of people are dealing with that, especially women. Um, so what are some other signs that people have low testosterone levels? Yeah, so another another sign is um, particularly in men is like lack of energy, lack of energy and vitality. This is a big factor um, because testosterone heavily influences like dopamine signaling, and it's very very active in the brain. Like uh, testosterone has some pretty powerful neuro behavioral effects, and it can also really dramatically affect um, our thinking patterns, our our mood and motivation. And so like a typical sign that you'll see with, you know, men that have low testosterone is lack of confidence and lack of, you know, ambition and drive. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other ones? I definitely, I think there's a lot of, you know, I want to say some millennials that are, they have a lot of those symptoms, you know, eating a lot of junk food, watching a lot of dopamine releasing, you know, uh, social media and whatnot, and what can be lacking a lot of drive and motivation just in general, uh, maybe in that, that generation. Mm, yeah, definitely contributing to like the lack of resilience and um, just the ability for them to cope with modern day society, like the ability to cope you know, that, that coping mechanism, we look at, we can sort of look at testosterone as like a, as a, an adaptive hormone. It's like a protective adaptive hormone. Unlike, you know, cortisol, we don't want cortisol to be elevated all the time chronically because that can contribute to disease. And there's funnily enough, like an inverse relationship between, you know, testosterone and cortisol. So, you know, that's something that we need to really consider. God, I mean, we are under so much stress today. I mean, of every different type from EMF mm -hmm. to emotional trauma, which just kind of uh, unconsciously just drains our energy to nutritional stress and emotional stress and all the fear mongering in the media as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so just a lot of stuff going on today for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely think another factor is... Um, or a consequence of having low testosterone in, 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 in men is like the body composition effects. So like, you know, we see men that have low testosterone and they struggle to build muscle and they also carry, you know, excess body fat. And so it really makes their, like their ideal body, like their, their dream body goals more difficult to achieve because testosterone can also affect fat burning and um, body composition. Yeah, I know for myself, I think I've always been really low in testosterone and I've always really struggled, like really hit the gym hard four days mm. a week, sometimes five days a week and just still struggling to build muscle. And I just thought, oh, I'm just a woman. That's that's why. Uh, but, but now that I do testosterone replacement and I just, I get much better results. You know, I do mm. much less workouts. And I'm doing like, you know, three, three times a week, but before I'd have to do five times a week in order to, to really get ahead and really build muscle. And it was very, very frustrating. Mm. Yeah, definitely a contributing factor. And also as part of that, like pathway, um, if we look at sort of upstream, I think a, a number of people get confused around like testosterone is really synthesized from cholesterol. So if we look at like a, a dietary factors that contribute to low testosterone, one really important factor to consider is a very low fat diet. Um, that's going to really sabotage and destroy a man's level of testosterone. Or a vegan diet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk I, about I'm that. Not... Let's talk about that, okay? Because I know there's a sure. lot, a lot of people you know, uh, you know, that are maybe getting sold on that diet for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And we love animals. We all, we're not sociopaths over here. And we all love animals too. 
Um, but there's some people that are really, you know, get into it. They just, they don't want to participate in that. But I, I really uh, firmly don't believe, I know that people cannot get their nutritional needs met even through supplementation on that diet and the cholesterol, lack of cholesterol on the diet is a huge yeah. factor at interfering in one's hormone production. I mean, it's just like a death sentence to hormones and oh, testosterone. For sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've even seen blood work before and after the vegan diet. And, you know, I've had guys come back to me after 12 weeks of just pure vegan diet and their testosterone levels have dropped by up to 60%. Wow. And it's just striking to see it in their blood work. And you can also see it in their like their general demeanor and their like the way they present. They just come across as like less um confident and less like less assertive. They're more submissive sort of thing. So um yeah, definitely. I mean, the vegan diet being lack you know, generally low in saturated fats, unless they're having coconut oil, but like generally like quite low in saturated fats. Um yeah, that's going to be a major factor contributing to their low testosterone. But even coconut oil it doesn't have cholesterol in it. And there's so many different kinds of saturated fat The in animal proteins. So there's different types of saturated fat in coconut oil. And there's certainly no cholesterol in coconut oil. And so it's just, you can't supplement cholesterol uh, to make your hormones. So it's just, uh, I think people doing a vegan diet, I think most of them, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know the nutritional uh, deficiencies they have, their compromised ability to detox. Uh, there's so many problems. So like there's a huge, a whole mm. list of the fat soluble vitamins that they, they don't get. So I don't, I'll stop ranting right there. Can you talk about other things that reduce testosterone production? Yeah, for sure. So another factor is related to some of the vitamins. So looking at um, vitamin D deficiency has definitely been shown to um, lower testosterone levels. And one thing I like to emphasize is that it's always ideal to get vitamin D or synthesize vitamin D from the sun. So, you know, going outside, being outside, exposing so exposing the body to sunlight is m more ideal than taking a vitamin D supplement. However, obviously in certain conditions, certain environments, being in a, you know, when there's no sunlight, for example, London <laughs> or, or some parts of the UK, where there's this minimal sunlight, that's where vitamin D supplementation can be, you know, highly useful and advantageous. But if we look at like sun exposure, the sunlight hitting the skin is also going to trigger the mel melanocortin system as well. It's going to stimulate alpha MSH, which is another hormone that helps with sexual libido and like sexual arousal. So being outside, exposing the body to sunlight and even Funnily enough, like even men exposing their testes, their their balls to sunlight, you know, for like a few seconds can actually help to stimulate testosterone production as well. Yeah, I've seen people doing that on Instagram. I thought, oh, that's an interesting post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're just really trying to get people interested in, in sunning their, their scrotums. Yeah. And so... Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So obviously... Um, Sun exposure much much better better than um, obviously sun exposure is much better than just supplementing vitamin D. It's not the not necessarily the same thing. And uh, mm. anything else that you can think of before we maybe getting get into you know how to optimize our testosterone? Yeah, I'd say definitely the type of exercise that a that a man's doing is really un really important to understand. Is like, are they doing ultra long distance? aerobic training are they doing long duration aerobic activities if they are then this can actually increase cortisol and decrease testosterone whereas what we should be looking for is more like high intensity short duration activities involving large muscle groups so like that can be um, sprint training you using the rower machine um, doing weights or heavy you know he heavy squatting deadlifting bench pressing all of these compound movements require big, large muscle groups. And when we activate or engage these large muscle groups, the body responds by increasing the synthesis of testosterone. Yes. And so, yeah, because yeah, I have read that when men work out and they lift weights, that will increase their testosterone production. So obviously that should be a part of, of anyone's exercise routine for many reasons. 
Yeah, absolutely. With the um, dietary approach as well, um, we sort of mentioned a bit about, about the vegan diet, but even certain select foods, um, particularly for me- and even teas, certain teas and foods can actually lower testosterone. So um, men really need to be avoiding drinking excessive amounts of licorice or consuming licorice, um, mint or any sort of uh, tea that has mint or spearmint. And then even if we look at soy-based foods like soy products, soy milk, um, in my opinion, I think soy is actually problematic for men because it can actually lower DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. And men do not want to be lowering dihydrotestosterone too powerfully because that can result in some side effects. I mean, for it lowers thyroid function, I read by 6%. You know, a few hours yeah. after you drink it or eat it. And uh, mm. so let's talk about some different things that can optimize testosterone production. So what should we be doing? Yeah. So first of all, uh, number one is for men to make sure that their testes, their balls are actually kept cool. Um, this is really, really important to understand is that there's a reason why the testes sit outside the male body is because they need to be kept cooler than the core body temperature. And anytime the testes get too warm, even two degrees just above core body temperature can completely arrest spermatogenesis. So it can shut down sperm production. And so this is why a way to combat this, this, um, this heat damage is by actually applying an ice pack to the, to the testicles, not obviously directly up against the, the testes, but applying the ice pack up against the underwear where the testes hang. I'm sure yeah. that it will feel great. <laughs> so that's just if you're overheating, like you're after the jacuzzi or something of that nature, a hot hot yeah. day in Mexico. Yeah, I, I actually I have a I have a an official protocol for men, which is like 10 to 15 minutes, three times a day. Um, and that by itself, I've literally seen guys blood work before and after doing this, um, completely no other changes to their diet or exercise. And after 12 weeks, their testosterone has increased by around 20%. Mm, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. And I mm. read that, uh, magnesium glycinate can also dramatically increase testosterone levels as well. Yeah. So magnesium is crucial because it helps to decrease sex hormone binding globulin, which helps to free up more testosterone and and also magnesium is important for ATP production as well. Yeah. I mean that seems easier than icing your balls. <laughs> yeah. Though you know it's you know everyone, you know, has their things that there are their little tools that they use. But uh, I I for me I I want to take magnesium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um but what else? What what else can we do? Well, from a supplementation perspective, obviously magnesium is one of them, but there's a range of other um herbs that I really like to incorporate and what I recommend. Um, number one is from traditional Chinese medicine. You know, being being a naturopath, you know, I studied herbs and understand herbs quite well, but I also dipped my toes into the space of traditional Chinese medicine. So I was interested in learning and understanding about TCM and I just love the way that they um, describe herbs and things like that. So there was one herb that I was really interested in from traditional Chinese medicine, and that was a herb called cystanch tuberosa. And cystanch is uh, what they believe to be one of Genghis Khan's favorite herbs. And That's why he had that so he many has... children. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so that herb in particular is fantastic and is um, a great like supplement in a sense to help with increasing testosterone naturally, just like what we see with like um, tribulus. You see maca powder advertised quite a lot for testosterone, but that is more so for sexual arousal and libido. But cystanch tubulosa definitely helps with testosterone production. I'm really excited to announce my heavy docu-series. It's coming out February 14th in 2024. And on this heavy docu series, it's gonna, you can see it at theheavymovie.com. I interview over 100 experts on the topic of how heavy, surprise, how heavy metals and environmental toxins 
are promoting some of the most chronic health conditions of our time, obesity, resistant weight loss, fatigue and mitochondrial functioning, diabetes even. The number one cause of diabetes is toxins. Any foods people can eat to optimize testosterone? Yeah, so um, there's a range of different foods. So number one, I would say is actually honey. So raw honey is fantastic because it, it contains a constituent called chrysin, um, which is a flavonoid that's great for um, improving testicular function. It's an antioxidant in the testes. So definitely like raw honey is a great, you know, carbohydrate source. It tastes freaking delicious. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one. Similar to honey is actually royal jelly. So royal jelly is used a lot again in Chinese medicine, and that's great for like immune health and immune function. Um, but royal jelly does have some pretty impressive research to suggest that it can accelerate the conversion of DHEA into testosterone. And that's, you know, another natural food that's packed full of amino acids, um, peptides, and great um, healing substances. Yeah, I just love bee products. Love, love, love pollen and propolis and royal jelly. And and what about, say, like um, like taking collagen or taking um, like colostrum? I mean, that has a lot of peptides and things like that on it too. Yeah, definitely looking at like collagen being rich in proline, glycine, and some other amino acids is going to be great for healing the gut. And we do know that if there is leaky gut or intestinal hyperpermeability, which you know a lot about, um, if, if there is intestinal hyperpermeability, that can actually raise endotoxin levels in the bloodstream. And endotoxin has been shown to suppress luteinizing hormone signaling, which can affect testosterone production. So anything that we can do to optimize the gut will inevitably help with hormonal production as well. Yeah, gut's just central role in everything. And um, any other supplements uh, that people can take or are any other things that they can do to raise testosterone? So another amino acid that I'm a big fan of is actually taurine. Uh, so taurine is, uh, you know, it's talked about quite a lot in relation to like Red Bull and energy drinks. And a lot of people will perceive them as like unhealthy. And, you know, most energy drinks are pretty bad for you because they're, you know, high in caffeine and, you know, artificial flavors, things like that. But Taurine is included in these energy drinks and we can't throw the baby out with the bath with the bathwater because taurine is actually a great amino acid for longevity, but it's also great for increasing testicular function. Um, uh, uh, taurine actually saturates and accumulates in the testes and acts as an antioxidant and it helps with protecting the testes from damaging things like EDCs, um, xenoestrogens and other things in our environment. Yeah, and there's no taurine sources in the vegetarian or vegan diet. And so mm -hmm. that is obviously another problem uh, with those diets as well. And you need taurine for the liver function to to detox the liver or for the liver to be able to detox. So another problem mm -hmm. there. And so, um, so let's talk about maybe move to hormone replacement. Say people don't want to do any of that stuff, the, like the whole podcast we just talked about. <laughs> they just want to go to testosterone injections and, and replacement. Uh, what is your recommendation for that? Yeah, so TRT um, or HRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy, is definitely going to be highly useful in certain scenarios. So these are conditions where the individual has pretty much exhausted and tried almost everything possible to try and boost testosterone, and unfortunately, his net, his levels are you know not where they where they should be, um, and they don't care about fertility because obviously, going on testosterone replacement therapy for a, for a man is a potent contraceptive. Like it, it will it will significantly decrease fertility. Um, it won't oh, completely destroy it, but it will massively lower fertility. And so, the discussion I love to have with men is, okay, well, you know, maybe you're 35 years of age, you've already had maybe two kids, for example, and you've decided you don't want to have any further children in the future. And so then the question becomes, okay, well. Well, then TRT could be a good option for you because you no longer are concerned about fertility and you're also willing 
to commit to TRT pretty much for life, like for life, for, for a very extended period of time. Because whilst going on testosterone can be highly useful, uh, like acutely, um, if they decide to stop the hormone or cessation, complete um, withdrawal, obviously there's going to be a really difficult time functioning when you remove the hormone. It's, it can be really debilitating for men if they've been on testosterone therapy for maybe a year and then they stop, that period when they stop can be extremely challenging. Yeah, because it just takes time for the body to kind of get the message that it needs to rev up production again. Because naturally, if you have a lot of free-floating testosterone, the body's going to reduce production, obviously. It doesn't yeah. need it. Yeah, there, there are ways to um, really stimulate the testes to then, you know, re-kickstart production of testosterone. Like you can use, um, you know, N-clomiphene, some other clom like clomid, HCG, you know, there's a range of strategies that can be implemented to like re kickstart production and boost back up the levels, you know, back again naturally. But it ultimately comes down to the dosage that the individual was on to start with and like how long they were running that particular dosage for. Um, so if we're looking at like therapeutic dosages, usually that's between like 95 milligrams to about 120 milligrams per week. Um, that's usually a rough range for testosterone, but I'm actually really excited to see uh, the future of testosterone replacement therapy looking outside injections because again, lo a lot of a lot of people don't like to inject and it, you know most of the research is done on injectable testosterone replacement. Um, but I'm excited to see whether or not we can develop um, like an intranasal, like nasal spray delivery methods and even um, potentially like uh, sublingual peptides that can help with testosterone production. Yes. And aren't there uh, like supplements you could take like a DHEA or things that are precursors to testosterone that could, you know, conceivably increase production of testosterone? Yeah. So two major precursors, if we look at the cholesterol um, cascade, the next a conversion is like from cholesterol goes into pregnenolone and that pregnenolone can be actually supplemented and looking at a dosage between 10 milligrams to 50 milligrams sublingually. Um, and pregnenolone can actually be like a precursor, like a kickstart to help with testosterone production. And if we go further downstream, we can see that, you know, DHEA is another one, um, which can also be used in supplemental form as a precursor for testosterone production. So both pregnenolone and DHEA can either be used um, interchangeably or concomitantly like together. And those two precursors can actually help um, with not only testosterone production, but also like mood, energy, anti-aging effects um, and a whole wide variety of benefits. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that heavy metals and a lot of environmental toxins can poison these hydroxylase enzymes that, you know, help to produce uh, different precursors to hormones and help with the conversion of DHEA into testosterone. And that's how mm. they, you know, reduce production or reduce the balance of hormones is just by poisoning these hydroxylase enzymes, essentially. Mm. So detox, super key uh, for freeing your hormones and your body's ability to produce them. So let's talk about like testosterone replacement in females and uh, maybe doing, um, you know, injections or pellets or, or things of that nature. Yeah. So there's a wide variety of delivery methods for, you know, testosterone replacement in, in women. Um, like you said, you know, injection is one option. There's also the pellets, which can be used. And then also there's a transdermal cream that's also being used as well. Um, the, there's a trick with the um, with the transdermal cream that can be a bit like you don't want it to rub off onto, onto your um, onto your family and friends, and, you know, in case you, you touch them, things like that. But in terms of the um, application, I think that um, what's really important is that you know blood work is completed initially. Like there's a you know adequate amount of you know blood testing done, either like a Dutch test, for example, that can determine deficiencies. 
Um, and then supplementing with a, you know, a low dose of testosterone in women can, can be extremely beneficial for um, sexual functioning, like libido, arousal, um, even helping with building muscle, mood and motivation. Like they're going to receive a lot of the similar benefits that men see with testosterone. Um, even though women produce much lower amounts of testosterone, it's also extremely important. Yeah, because women, oh, well, let's tell us what the levels are. So men need to be pretty high. What are yeah. kind of the, what's the range you're looking for for men and the range for women? Yeah, so in men, I mean, ideally we're looking at anywhere from around 700 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. Um, and I believe in women, it's significantly lower. I think it's like one t uh, one tenth or like one fifth the amount. So it's a much, much, much lower amount um, in women as well. Yeah, when I go in to get my testosterone pellets, I do the little pellets. They do about a hundred milligrams of those, mm. and um, and that lasts for about three months or so. Uh, but yeah, it's you know for me, I think it's been really life changing to supplement with testosterone. I've been super super happy. Definitely not going back uh, to low testosterone levels. I think I had I had almost no testosterone. <laughs> it was just when I did my test. It was frightening. I was like, "Oh wow, I guess I, I was, uh, I was clued into the right thing. Go get some testing for my hormones." Yeah, but yeah, so I'm super happy with those results. That you know, libido came back, easier muscle building because I love weightlifting. So uh, really have you know lost some weight because uh, when you have testosterone, you build muscle and burn fat. So easy, like how you guys do, and we want that too. <laughs> But you can get too much of a good thing. You can definitely uh, get way too much testosterone. When I first took it, I had a little bit of acne on my chest, a little bit of hair fall out, but that subsided very quickly. And I haven't had any symptoms like that since. But it doesn't, I don't know if it's going to work for every woman as well, but you can just talk to your doctor and, you know, test and, uh, you know, do some supplementation. And, you know, the, the creams are good for women too. I think they can control the amount of testosterone or with the pellets you can't, you know, it's mm. just that's, you know, they're in you and they're, they wear off after a few months, but with the cream, you can kind of control the dosage a little bit more on a daily, but you have to do it daily with the cream on. Yeah. A, a, another alternative that's sort of worked quite well um, for women's reproductive functioning and also like fertility and sexual desire and arousal, lubrication, things like that is actually uh, tong Tonkat Ali, which is a herbal medicine that's used in, um, it's like Malaysian ginseng and also ashwagandha as well in women, but um, Malaysian ginseng or Tonkat Ali, um, that particular herb there has actually been shown to raise DHEA and some androgens in women as well. And so that's used as well as like an aphrodisiac and, you know, um, helping with sexual desire. Yeah, it seems like ashwagandha just reduce your stress levels and kind of balance your adrenals and indirectly help with with your libido in that way. Because for men and women, if you're really stressed, you're going to be make you're going to make stress hormones at the expense of sex hormones, and so mm -hmm. you've got to bring your stress levels down to optimize hormones. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely consider that. And also um, another like phytoandrogen, which is like a We've heard of phytoestrogens, which are like in soy and flax seeds and chia seeds and different. So these phytoestrogens, the equivalent is phytoandrogens. And so phytoandrogens are actually present in pine pollen. So pine pollen tincture, like an al alcoholic extraction of pine pollen tincture can be used to um, provide both men and women with, um, you know, phytoandrogens and they can get they can sort of like get a, a, a semi-testosterone related effect from pine pollen tincture if they dose it under the tongue sublingually and they leave it leave it there. Like most people notice like an energy boost, a mood boost, and just feeling great after pine pollen. Yeah, oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, and so anything else for women that we can do to raise our testosterone levels? Um, so I'd say definitely, as you mentioned before, weight training or lifting weights is going to be, you know, beneficial as well. Like building muscle is going to recruit, you know, the, the adrenal glands to like synthesize deep more DHEA and assist with like hormonal production in terms of, um, some other factors, there may be some other, 
um, herbs as well, like Sistanch, the one that I mentioned before, the way in which that the Genghis Khan herb, the way in which that herb works, it's not just for men. Like it's, um, there's a, there's a saying, it's like Sistanch in your pants. That's what they say is Sistanch in your pants. You can remember <laughs> it at naturopathic school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They call it the stalk enlarger. Like how can any guy not want to try that? Yeah. But it's good enough for Genghis Khan. It's good enough for you. Yeah. Um, that particular herb there can help with ink. So basically the way in which it works is it's, you said before about, you know, toxins destroying the enzymes and affecting the enzyme production, converting these hormones efficiently. Well, that cystanch, that herb there can actually upregulate a lot of those enzymes, the CYP, you know, 450, like it can actually increase the um, production of those enzymes, which in women can actually help with the conversion pathways towards both progesterone and testosterone as well. So you're talking about the CP450 enzymes in the liver. So the liver is where we're converting hormones. And so really, you know, ideally optimizing liver function and helping the liver, supporting the liver, the many different ways that you can do that is also going to help with, you know, our, our estrogen and metabolism and testosterone metabolism, et cetera. Yeah, well, one key, uh, I forgot to mention the other mint, like sort of like supplement is calcium deglucurate, which I'm sure you'd be familiar with. Um, calcium deglucurate is, is phenomenal, particularly for people who have had a history of massive exposure to xenoestrogens. Um, and I like to pulsatile the dosage. Not It's not a supplement I recommend taking every single day because then it can start to lower some of the beneficial hormones, but taking 250 to 500 milligrams of calcium deglucurate twice a week uh, is a great strategy to help release the burden off the liver, help to, um, and even the gut as well, lowering that beta glucuronidase and help with, you know, clearing out these xenoestrogens to basically just clean up the system. We're basically cleaning up the vessel, cleaning up the body, enabling it to function more optimally. Um, and so, yeah, you can sort of combine that with sauna, like, you know, using a sauna to, to sweat out these toxins and, and pollutants. Um, and so calcium deglucurate can help with that process as well. Yeah, I think there's a huge problem with people being estrogen dominant because there's mm. so many xenoestrogens in our environment. So there's the plastics, the plasticizer chemicals, the BPA and receipts and the there's metalloestrogens, heavy metals that act like estrogens on our estrogen receptors. There's there's a lot of feminization of men and over feminization of women as well, um, because of so many estrogenic substances in our environment, perfumes, which are petroleum based, anything made out of petroleum is going to be estrogenic. And there is just really, I think, a huge epidemic and you know, doing testosterone therapy or things that can boost testosterone can help to kind of balance the scales a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And as part of that, I think it's also important to understand the impact of like a super high protein diet with like minimal, like detoxifying vegetables. So like a great strategy that I like to encourage people to consider and even great for helping balance female hormones is um, something that was really popularized by Dr. Ray Pete. Um, he, you know, spoke about the raw carrot salad, um, like, you know, using, so gra grating your carrot and just putting a little bit of, um, a little bit of coconut oil and vinegar on top of that and having that twice a day, that can really help to clear out the, um, excess estrogen buildup in the gut and helps with relieving endotoxin burden on the liver, um, and so that strategy there by itself will really assist with um, stool quality, like it helps with um, creating the perfect poop. <laughs> the perfect that poop. fiber, carrot fiber. <laughs> yeah, um, before you turn orange, you know, that's a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. way to get a tan also, eating a lot of carrots, <laughs> eating one carrot a day. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that that sounds great. I mean, and what is there a, a protein component of that of that diet? To optimize yeah. testosterone yeah so what i was sort of alluding to before is like if if um someone's going on a very high protein diet what's going to happen is if they're also exercising extremely vigorously like let's say they're training 
five days a week and they decide to go on a super high protein diet, what's going to happen is, unfortunately, it's going to raise a metabolite known as ammonia. So ammonia will start to build up and develop in the body. We know that ammonia can actually cross the blood-brain barrier um, and that can contribute to things like brain fog, um, apathy, headaches, think different like neurological symptoms. Um, and so this is why like we we want to be incorporating supplements that can help to lower uh, the ammonia buildup and actually help with ammonia clearance. And um, vitamin B1 or thiamine, vitamin B1, um, is a is a supplement that that really does help with decreasing ammonia buildup in the brain. And if you're someone that notices, like personally, when I do extremely, um, let's say I train legs extremely hard on a Wednesday, and you know it's a Thursday today. If I train legs extremely hard on a Wednesday, <clears throat> the following day I will pretty often notice like a bit more brain fog and lack of mental clarity, and I'm convinced that it's due to the massive buildup of lactic acid and ammonia that you know that is super painful doms the the real intense muscle soreness i do believe that ammonia would be playing a role in the brain fog that we still experience interesting interesting what other suggestions do you have for us uh for men or women to optimize their testosterone so i definitely say optimizing sleep needs to be you know massively considered like Insufficient sleep has been shown to negatively affect testosterone production. So making sure we're getting, you know, we hear it all the time, seven to nine hours of high quality sleep. Like we don't just say that for, for no reason. Like there's definitely a lot of scientific backing to justify that particular claim. But then also uh, like, is it high quality sleep? Like, or are you sleeping with an with a, with a Wi-Fi router next to your head? Are you sleeping with tight boxer shorts that's keeping your testes too constricted and too cold? Like they sh men should be sleeping naked, in my opinion. Um, you know, this is this is important stuff to With understand. a chili pad. I'm sure you want them with their balls on a chili pad, freezing <laughs> yeah. all night long. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, that's definitely important to understand. And then also like having some sort of like sleep stack or sleep, a pre-sleep stack protocol in place like you mentioned magnesium glycinate we can use things like um that's where taurine can be beneficial because it has a anti-anxiety effect so you can have your taurine before bed and then also consuming anti-stress teas like lemon balm lemon balm is great for decreasing cortisol um and then we can also look into high doses of glycine so looking between five to 10 grams of glycine can help to actually helps to lower body temperature. So we're getting a decrease in body temperature from glycine and a lowering of cortisol. Okay, fantastic. Uh, well, Lucas, yeah. how can people work with you if they're looking to optimize their hormones? Uh, like, How do you work with people and, and how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so they can check me out, uh, boostyourbiology.com. That's my website that's got some really useful content there. They can also check me out on YouTube. That's Boost Your Biology. I create a lot of free content for people to just completely devour and you know help to educate themselves. So yeah, go check me out on there. And uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, having a chat with you, Wendy. Yes. Yeah. I was. I love talking about hormones and I wanted to have you come on because you're a testosterone expert. And obviously are bursting with testosterone. And so I want to have someone come on that's like a shining example of like really good testosterone levels. And so am I as, as a female, but, but I'm supplementing. So I'm kind of cheating a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah. So thanks so much, Lucas, for coming on. And anyone that wants is you, are you taking clients? Can people work with you on a one-to-one -one basis to optimize their hormones? Yep, they can. Um, probably the best way would be to send me an email. It's lucas at boostyourbiology.com. Okay, fantastic. Well, Lucas, thanks so much for coming on the show. And everyone, I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. I just love doing this show every week and bringing you experts from around the world to help give you those little pieces of the puzzle to help you optimize your health because you deserve to feel good. And I'm just honored that you took the time to, to watch the show. Thanks for tuning in. And I interviewed Dr. Terrence Cooper also on my heavy docu-series, which is coming out 
in February of 2024. You can go opt in for this totally free event at theheavymovie.com. And I interviewed over 100 experts on this series talking about how toxins cause our chronic health conditions today, how toxins are contributing to the obesity epidemic, resistant weight loss, how they interfere in our sex stress and thyroid hormones, um, how they you know, interfere in our mitochondria functioning, causing fatigue and chronic fatigue, how they affect our brain health, our cognition, brain performance, and even contributing to dementia. Uh, we talk about diabetes, how the number one cause of diabetes is actually toxins. And we talk about how toxins interfere in digestion, how they cause aging, and just all those different mechanisms, and then the solution. So how to detox, one of the best ways to detox, what works, what doesn't. So lots of really life-saving information in this series. Go check it out. Sign up for free at theheavymovie.com. The Myers Detox Podcast is created and hosted by Wendy Myers. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Wendy Myers and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician. Thank mm-hmm. you.